Good afternoon. It's August the 27th and time to wrap up another trading day. We got started this morning. We basically saw a trading range uh, with an up bias. Uh, we wanted to sell failure uh, to take out uh, the previous day's highs at 2000 and 2.75 and we want, hope to buy 93s to 95s but we thought that as strong as the market was we might have to pay upwards of 97 to get in. So uh, we started out the day a uh, nice retest failure right here. Uh, you would have been short um, in the uh, 97, 98 area and the market traded down to 94.75. So you're able to pick up our three points off the first trade as envisioned. Uh, the low is 94.75. We were interested in buying in the 93.95 area. Uh, in this situation, it had been long at 96.50 and the market traded back up to 99.50. So you had a shot at two plus points depending on how you took that trade. Uh, then the market had just slowly, slowly come down and we find ourselves back at 93 and can we break it late today. On the last update we talked about maybe tomorrow's a down day setting up a rally into Friday's close. Uh, the economic news remains mixed. Uh, there's enough going on around the world. Uh, Germany's Chancellor Merkel came out and said the United States can't solve all of the world's problems and she's actually taken the lead role uh, in the negotiations between the EU and Russia and the Ukraine right now. So uh, today we had a trading range market pretty much as envisioned. Uh, a little lower than we thought it might go uh, but it has found support at least up until uh, 215 Central in the areas where we saw support. So we had a pretty good day trading all things considered. Okay, looking at the E-mini, longer term, we have an inside day that usually favors a trading range um, on the next day, assuming we close right here. So, And it fits our call for the week, sideways to higher with a close over 2000 for Friday. So the F1 screen says trading range. Looking at the F2 screen, does it confirm that? And on the F2 screen, we can see that we have a B pattern with a move out of the middle. And it's going to get down to whether we can break support down in this area, in the 90-92 area or not. If we can't, my guess is the trading range holds. So I'd guess we'd be a little bit lower, but we probably won't break it tomorrow. Uh, we do have news tomorrow. We have jobless claims looking for 302. We have second estimate for GDP looking at 4%, the deflator 2%. Uh, that's old news. It won't have much impact, but they will be looking for what kind of um, revision we have. We have pending home sales plus a half a percent. So revisions for GDP will probably be the market's focus. And usually we get these numbers in the revi revised lower. So this would be one, this would be two, and pending home sales later in the day would be the third thing that the market looks at. So we'll put our buy down here, 90.92 on the assumption we'll go a little bit lower. And buy number two will be 85.87. We do like our number two levels much better because it enables the trading community to get stops below the obvious in this case. On the uh, sell side, uh, we have a new move that started at 97. Uh, we're going to sell failure to take out 98.2000. So basically be trying to sell on the 2000 and we'll leave it at that.
Okay, the note was really, really uh, much stronger this afternoon than I thought it was going to be. The knob spread really expanded out uh, today. Um, so we're going to be looking at a uh, F1 screen on the uh, note, and that's going to say high prices tomorrow. You'll see it right there. We've got a higher low and a higher high. And everybody says, gosh, it can't be that simple. It really is if you understand the meaning of a daily chart. And the daily chart is where the large players have to play. Uh, it is where the big money has to build positions. They are interested in the direction of the market, trade location, is really not uh, something that they can get because of the size of their orders. So they have to average into their positions and they have to average out. And um, so this one says it's pointed to a higher price. Looking at the F2 screen, it's going to be a strong we're dealing with P, and so the issue is, is, can we take out and move the market higher tomorrow? And the big news for us tomorrow, in addition to the economic news, is the seven-year auction. And um, we had an auction price of 126.01, one and a half to 126.09. Uh, if you average those two together. Uh, that says we should auction tomorrow in the five area. Uh, so they, they, they tend to trade for average prices. So the easiest trade to see is to sell failure to take out 10, 12, 15. I think for a two takeout, that level will need some help from the news or the E-mini overnight. And on the buy side, the last rotate down was in the five to six area. So we'll make buy one, one to five. And then buy to 29 to 25. Knob spread is really, really strong. Uh, the large players uh, are still buying. Um, the knob spread on quarter half point retracements. And that tells you that um, the economy, these guys, the economy is weaker than forecast. And I, I put up the CBOE projections for growth, and I mean, they're really laughable. Uh, ever since March of 2009, every central bank, every uh, major financial institution's forecast for economic growth uh, have had to been revised lower and sometimes substantially so. So uh, here we are at 4105. Uh, we're going to sell failure to take out 8 to 12. I think that's probably going to be probably pretty easy to do. Um, lean against 8 for a sell. And then on the buy side, the last rotate down was 26. We're at 05. Uh, this has been strong. And it may be a little cute, but I'm going to give it a little room. We're going to try to buy 25s to 29s on the idea that I have to pull the market back some to move the seven-year paper. Uh, 01s may be where we have to engage the market, but uh, we'll try to go a little cheaper than 17 to 21. But the um, German financials, the German treasuries, uh, they pay a 0% interest rate out to uh, three years now. And when you look at uh, you know, you need to get something on your money uh, unless you're doing it out of complete fear. And there is some of that uh, going on. Uh, then it makes our treasuries pretty attractive, the number two choice. And that's probably adding some support to the markets, too. <laughs> mm. 
Okay, gold is giving us another B pattern like we had yesterday. And the question and the issue becomes, where can you buy it? Uh, so this 80 area has been pretty, pretty attractive for us. So maybe stops below 80, 80 plus or minus for buy one. And then 75, 77. Okay, the danger being long is, is as it always is, is large central bank intervention. And we'll make 87 to 90 sell one, and 92, 95 sell two. And I don't like going home long gold into our close uh, because of central bank intervention around the world, but um, by the time London rolls around, broken the market, then longs tend to make more sense. Very volatile contract, um, but a good contract to trade, though. And it's uh, when things really, really get quiet, you re we really end up in crude and gold because of the lack of volatility in the other contracts. Okay, crude, uh, once again, is signaling that um, oil supplies are secure on the globe. We're stuck in a trading range. Um, the morning we came in wanting to sell a 25 to 50 area, that looks pretty good to me. Then 75 to the buck for sell two. Don't see any reason to change that. We were hoping to buy 93, 93 and a quarter. We're at 83, so we'll make it a quarter and a half. This is very, very aggressive. And then 75 to the buck. But you can see right here that we've got a uh, 92.50. in a 94.50 market and leaning against these edges, you know, generally produces a buck, buck and a half pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, for those of you that are patient, uh, you should have a chance to get your trades off at this level a couple of three times a week. Not every day, but it's there a couple, three times a week. The 93.25 to 50 is very, very aggressive. Uh, we're in no man's land. We don't have a lot going for us on that particular trade structurally. And last but not least, least the Euro. BlackRock uh, got um, invited by the European Central Bank to help them with their debt problems and restructuring and quantitative easing and everything like that. And BlackRock um, bought up a lot of junk paper from the Treasury and put them out. And uh, we're able to profit with that. And we might have uh, get in there and negotiate with the ECB, take a lot of junk paper off of their hands at really, really attractive prices. There is risk involved in it. Don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not a risk-free transaction and then uh, be able to sell them back in the open market a couple, three years from now for very, very handsome profits. So um, these guys know how to do it. They know how to drive the price of those securities into the ground, and they know how to buy them. Uh, they got the capital to do it, and they know how to profit from it. So not saying the EU invited the hen uh, the fox into the hen house, but uh, uh, they're dealing with people that know what they're doing. Okay, so tw 10 to 20 is cell 1. That's where we are. Uh, take your pick. 25 to 35 would be cell 2. Deals with Russia and peace in the Ukraine tends to rally this market. Uh, we'll make um, 70 to 80 by 1. And then 40 to 50, which is where we, our recommendation last night for buy two. Do like this one. I think we're headed to 131 before it's over. 
don't know what piece of news it takes to get us down there, but I do have a feeling it's coming. That's it for August the uh, 27th, 2014. I will see you all bright and early.